Welcome back, Wargamers. This is a new edition of Budget Wargamer, and I want to take a moment to talk about something that's relatively new, definitely new to this channel. I've rarely ever talked about trading card games, but they are another aspect of gaming that I'm definitely into myself. And in this case, I want to talk about a game that just came out August 1st called Argent Saga, the trading card game uh, logo down here. And I've seen a lot of talk on Facebook and online and some other places about how to build a competitive deck. And one of the colors that I've seen und underserved is fire, because I feel like a lot of people have been focusing on Ergon and Hoenna, as well as some of the other champions, but I have rarely ever seen somebody build a competitive deck with fire's main champion. This is the intro champion called Dragonhold, and he's like a cyborg dragon. And his special ability is to exhaust himself, which means tap, pay one shard, discard one fire unit from my hand, and then I can tutor my deck for any non-legendary dragon and put it in my hand, which is a really strong ability because anytime you're playing aggro, you want to be able to basically summon up exactly what you need at that given time. And notice the only caveat is it can't be legendary. So you won't be able to take the top dragon in this deck, which is a little bit of a bad, bad news, but also it's so situational that you'll even get that far in a game of aggro to be able to cast it, and I'll show you why. For my spirit, I'm taking Corona. Corona is also another spirit that you don't see a lot of people loving on, but I think now that they're having the legendary shards that you'll be able to use Corona's ability with your other um, spirits, you might some pe see some people taking that shard. But once per turn, during your turn, you can discard a fire unit from your hand and deal 500 to target unit, which is not a lot of damage at the cost of discarding an entire unit from your actual hand, so that sounds bad on the surface, but I'll explain how that could be a positive. But its Soul Burst ability is really clutch, and this is when you can Soul Burst the card, you flip it over, and then a target unit on your side gains quickness. So late game, when you've already crushed the last tower and you need to get that quick strike in on your opponent before you give them their turn, that's the best time to use Corona and just come in for that smash to the face and Soul Burst Corona and then win the game basically. And I think that the shard that gives your other spirits that ability is something that's going to probably devalue Corona a little bit by giving this to uh, giving this as an end game alternative potentially to other um, spirits, but that'll also be situational on them drawing that shard out of their deck. You always know that when you have Corona on your sideboard here next to your champion that you don't have to wait to draw that legendary out of the deck. So got my five towers, we'll go in, we'll just leave them face up for the sake of the game. But I want to explain why Dragonholt and Corona's abilities are actually potentially a good thing. Not only can Dragonholt tutor, but he helps you take a, a unit from your hand, put it in your discard pile down here. Corona doing the same thing. Why would you want to do that? Well, the ultimate card in the deck is Bahamut. And he's the legendary dragon, so you can't tutor him with Dragonholt. But if you'll notice his ability... He costs two less to play if you have five or more dragon units with different names in your discard zone. So every time a dragon dies, going into here, dragon hole, selectively allowing you to take one from your hand and feed it here so you know it could be of a different name than one that's already there. Same with Corona's ability. Even if you're not killing something, you're potentially feeding the discard pile to help get this out at a cost of six rather than eight, which allows you to get this out mid-game instead of late-game. And mid-game, coming out with quickness, as well as an arrive ability that's basically going to clear the board because you can expel a unit and then deal 2,000 damage to each unit that's adjacent to it. So that's up to three units that could be removed from the table, and 2,000 is going to take care of almost all guardians. Expel doesn't care about the power of that guardian. So then you're going to come in and smash a tower, potentially with this guy. So he's definitely your ultimate for the deck. But let me go and show you some combo styles and some play styles of, and strategies of what you want to do when you have these cards in your hand and how you're going to play them against your opponent. So we're going to start off the game, and we'll assume that we go first. We're going to draw five cards from the top of the deck, and then let's go ahead and take a look at those cards. So Mecha Dragon, he's got a cost of seven, so he's really a late game uh, type of card. It's a pretty good one given that it has quickness and can have destroyer as well. So that's something we definitely want to have in our deck, but not necessarily in our opening hand. We want to be looking for some fast plays, things that have a cost of one or two, three probably at the most. So um, if we take a look here, I always try to disc, uh, if I don't have a Scarlet Egg in my opening hand, I'll, I'll try to get rid of cards I feel like I don't need because I think opening the game with a Scarlet Egg is a really strong position for this and I'll, I'll show you. 
Um, Juvenile Dragon, probably one of the best. Although it's a very weak dragon, it's very good for early game. Enraged Attack, uh, that's a good spell, so I'll show you some good stuff to do with that. And then Dragonic Summoner. Even though on the art it's clearly a human, the card counts as a dragon, so it works great with Dragon Holt being able to pull this out. But its main ability is that when it arrives on the battlefield, let's see if I can focus in on that. When it arrives on the battlefield, you get to take a dragon unit with cost two or less from your hand and put it into play. So, for example, I could play Dragonic Summoner, and then because I have Juvenile Dragon or Scarlet Egg in my hand, I could play those for free along with them when they arrive. So that's a really strong ability. So since Mecha Dragon isn't all that great, I'm going to Mulligan, and then we'll go for that. So Imbued by Fire is a good way to buff some of your creatures, and at a cost of one, it's certainly going to do us less, um, do us more good early on in the game. Now you would normally think that like shoving Mech Dragon all the way at the bottom is going to make him really hard to pull out. But if you noticed real close, he wasn't legendary. So being able to discard any dragon or unit from a hand technically doesn't even have to be a dragon. But this deck, all the units are dragons. I can discard a unit from a hand, pay one, exhaust him, and they go right in my deck and find him when I need him late game. When I know I'm going to have seven of the shard points. So knowing that we are starting the game, I'm going to take a shard put that in my shard zone. So I have one resource to play and I'm going to put out Scarlet Egg. So earlier I was very um, explaining that I want sharp Scarlet Egg in my opening hand. So I'll go ahead and play that, pass the turn to my opponent. Presumably, you know, they're obviously going to get a shard. Then they're also going to put out a cost one creature. If they have one, if they don't, then they're going to have nothing on their battlefield. And then it comes back to my turn. So then I'm going to draw a card. Okay, picking up another Scarlet Egg. So that's always good going to ready my shard and then I'm going to take another shard from my shard zone or shard deck shard pool and put it into my shard zone so now I've got two resources now what I'm going to want to do is since I have juvenile dragon I'm going to put that out so this is a dragon that's going to give me quickness when I have two or more other dragons on the field and then I'm going to play scarlet egg again so these technically count as dragons although they can't attack which will give juvenile dragon quickness so now that we have the Scarlet Egg, second Scarlet Egg out, this Juvenile Dragon is going to get Quickness. Now I'll show you what we're going to do with these Scarlet Eggs to make a very um, strong case here, very strong attack. So what we're going to do is sacrifice the first Scarlet Egg, and that Scarlet Egg is going to go here into our discard pile. That allows us to go into our deck and choose any dragon that we want. So what I want to do is find a dragon with Quickness, and in this dragon deck, all I've really got in here with Quickness at this time happens to be juvenile dragons, but I'm going to get to be able to put them directly into play. So as I'm going through the deck here, I passed up a juvenile dragon, and we would go ahead, we would shuffle our deck, present it to our opponent, you know, and then they would cut it. And then I'm going to sack the other Scarlet Egg and do the exact same thing. I want to bring in that other juvenile dragon. So basically my, on turn two, my whole play set of juvenile dragons is coming out onto the battlefield because all three of them are going to have quickness seeing as how there's two other dragons in play. So what this is going to allow me to do is to attack one of my opponent's towers, and as we know, we have a 40% chance on the opening swing of being able to kill the opponent's tower, so let's presume that I hit a 1500 tower. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swing with a different uh, juvenile dragon for my next attack and swing at a different tower, because if I hit a 1500 tower there, I could go ahead and finish it off, but let's fish for that 1,000 tower. So I'm going to go ahead and attack. Now I've got a 50% chance between the other remaining four that I'm going to find a 1,000 power tower. And let's say that I hit one of those. So I've destroyed a tower. They've done their effect. Maybe they've returned two cards to, from the field to the owner's hand. They could have me pick these up. Or maybe I killed the tower of fire and they're going to take out this dragon. But if they didn't, or let's say I hit another 1,500 power tower, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swing with the other juvenile dragon and take another tower out. So then that leaves me here with three exhausted dragons on turn two, and I'm going to pass to my opponent. So on their turn, they're going to do as they like. Maybe I do or don't have any of these juvenile dragons in play, but on my turn, I'm going to come back and draw a card. This time I've drawn a raw firebomb. Not the best of cards, but I'm going to go ahead, ready my cards now that I've drawn, and I'm going to take another shard out of the shard zone. So this time I've drawn a Worven Crystal, so let me hold this up for you. A Worven Crystal is... Red's best crystal, so as it comes into the battlefield, it has an arrive ability, and that arrive ability is going to allow you 
to take a dragon out of your discard pile. So let's say that they destroyed one of your juvenile dragons, or if they didn't, you still have these two Scarlet Eggs down here. So as an arrive ability, let's assume I'm going to go ahead and take that Scarlet Egg out of there and add that back to my hand. So this is a shard that not only can I play it the turn it comes out for a resource, but it has an arrive ability that greatly complements a dragon deck because it specifically lets you take dragons out of your discard pile. So let's see what I want to do with this hand. So now I've got three resources here. What I'm actually going to choose to do, because of what's in my hand, I'm going to pay three, then I'm going to play Enraged Attack. Now Enraged Attack lets me put one unit with cost of three or less from my hand, and if I do, deal 1,000 a target unit. So I'm going to pick a unit, presuming that my opponent has one, deal 1,000 to it, hopefully remove it, and then because Dra Dragonic Summoner is a cost of three, I'm going to bring that into the battlefield. And then, once again, Dragonic Summoner is going to allow me to bring another dragon with unit cost two or less from my hand into play. Now, the only dragon that I happen to have in my hand is that Scarlet Egg that I pulled out of my discard deck with my Wervern Shard. So I'm going to go ahead, put the Scarlet Egg into play, and then, because I have two or more other dragons, I'm going to resack that Scarlet Egg again, and then I'm going to go ahead into my deck, and this time I want to look for a booster dragon. So I happen to find one right on the bottom. That's convenient. He's going to go straight into play. Now, Dragonic Summoner has, currently has Summoning Sickness, so to speak, and we've resolved that effect. So does Booster Dragon. But Booster Dragon is going to be able to boost another dragon by 1,500 power for this turn. So I'm going to boost one of my Juvenile Dragons up to 2,500. Now, if you remember from the second turn, I've already attacked a couple towers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to either finish off one of the remaining towers or I'm going to fish for another tower. So I'm going to swing for a tower here. I'm going to finish it off with the other juvenile dragon. And then because now I have a 2500 power dragon, I'm going to swing and immediately destroy a tower. This is all, of course, assuming that they don't have guardians. It'd be nice at this point if somebody would then use their tower fire to destroy one of my juvenile dragons. Out comes the juvenile dragon. So that clears up a little bit of the battlefield. So now we're going to pass to their turn. They're going to do as they wish. Let's say they attack another juvenile dragon. They remove it from play because they don't like these guys anymore and it was exhausted, so it was valid to attack it. Now it's my turn. Now I'm going to draw a card. Okay, so we've got Deranged Dragon. That's a nice low cost but low power um, dragon that doesn't have really any abilities other than it's basically enraged, so it, even though it's deranged. It has to attack every turn. So I'm going to go ahead and pull another shard out. Now I've got four. So I can think about what I want to do here from my hand. I've got a dragon. I've got imbued by fire, which can buff a dragon. So that's always a good idea. I don't have to attack first, but I also have Dragon Holt's ability here. So knowing that this isn't that great of a dragon, it's not going to do a lot for me this turn. I kind of wish I had quickness, but I don't. And I also kind of wish that I had another Dragonic Summoner or something else to put out so I could fill that slot in this slot. But, you know, say Levy, that's not something I'm going to be able to do this turn. So let's go ahead and exhaust this. I'm going to exhaust Dragon Holt, and I'm going to discard this dragon from my hand. Now I'm going to be able to go through my deck and look for any dragon that I potentially want here, but i got to remember I only have three resources left to put anything into play. So I want to look back and try to find something. There's a lot of four-cost four dragons in here. There's another two cost I could pull out, and that would buff one of my other dragons. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my hand. All right. And then we're going to shuffle the deck, pass that to the opponent to cut, and then we're going to put that back. So now I've got three more resources to play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust those two. I'm going to put out Booster Dragon. This turn, Booster Dragon is going to buff this Juvenile Dragon, turning it into a 2500 power threat. So this booster dragon now has summoning sickness, and I can attack with all three of these dragons. So I'm going to finish off a tower, if I have to, finish off another tower, and then go in for the kill. So right there on turn four, we now have an aggro deck win, presuming that nothing else really happened. And I know that's kind of a perfect world, but I've still got some other buffs in my hand. Like let's say that somebody did block one of my dragons and I needed to buff them up real quick for my one last shard. I could decide to use this spell and buff one of my fire units by 2,000, making any of my dragons on the battlefield a very serious threat. I could have also potentially used the Ral Firebomb, gotta love these first edition foils, to deal 1,500 uh, damage to a target and 1,000 each adjacent unit, maybe removing some of their units or some of their guardians, 
And then that's some of the tactics that I like to play with doing fire. Later in the game, because I've been able to stack my discard zone with one, two, three dragons, presumably more as these come out, eventually I'll have five dragons in there with different names, and I'll be able to pull Bahamut out for a cost of six, hopefully on turn six. It'll depend on whether I draw him out of my deck or not, and then, you know, that'll really help accelerate the end game if need be. So go ahead and like my channel, leave me some comments, let me know what you think of this playstyle, whether you're into doing any of the fire decks. Are you running Dragonholt and Corona? Or are you running Dragonholt and some other spirit? I'd like to hear from you guys, so stay tuned to Budget Wargamer for some more games.